Iran has been the topic of much debate recently with its move towards the 720 level against the US dollar, prompting renewed calls for, the, for intervention by the Reserve Bank or by the government. But while a weak Iran may help make South African exports more competitive, it will be inflationary. Joining us to take this discussion further are uh, going to be Brian Cantor from Investec and joining us in just a little while will be Chris Malikane from Kasatu. Uh, Brian, a very good afternoon to you. We've had some interesting comments out of the ANC in yesterday's session. Of course, a lot of debate uh, coming to the fore when it comes to the very strong RAND. They're saying that we need to find ways that we ke can keep a stable RAND. Uh, quite interesting given the fact that the local currency has been volatile for many, many years now. Apart from that, we also had Pravin Gordon, uh, uh, finance minister, talking about uh, the fact that the central bank also needs to review the way that uh, shareholders uh, conduct themselves. Uh, interesting news coming to the fore and, of course, very important topics when it comes to the RAND. Yes. Yes, well, uh, you can stop the RAND from rising by buying foreign exchange in our market. It's hard to see how you could significantly weaken the RAND, uh, technically, and then even if you could do so, you would worry about the inflationary consequences of that. And uh, it's not the RAND that matters, it's, it's the real RAND, uh, uh, the RAND adjusted for inflation differences. That, that makes you more or less competitive in export and in the local market. So um, you know, one should appreciate that the RAND is traded heavily outside South Africa. Uh, not all of the trade, in fact, uh, probably two thirds of the official trade in the RAND reported to the Reserve Bank takes place between third parties who have nothing to do with South Africa. It's not, it's not related to South African trade or finance. It's, uh, it's a trade in an emerging market currency for emerging market hedging purposes uh, and um, that, that, that trade c carries on. Uh, you, you, you couldn't control it and you also couldn't control the trade in RAND between third parties that is not reported mm. to, uh, to the South African authorities. It's a big market. It's one of the biggest foreign exchange markets. It trades 13, 14 billion dollars a day. I think uh, realism says it's not, there's not much you could do to, 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 to weaken it. You, 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 could, you could stop it rising if you prepare to uh, uh, buy, buy dollars, etc., in, in the market, oh, which Brian. our Reserve Bankers and Treasury have proved uh, rather reluctant to do. Uh, Brian, uh, 13 to 14 billion dollars a day traded in the RAND. Do we have the firepower to intervene in the markets and try and stabilize the RAND? Well, well, there's nothing stopping you buying, buying dollars uh, without a uh, limit as long as uh, you know, the, the, the Treasury is prepared to do so. What, what, what happens in, in these operations is the, is the Reserve Bank buys the dollars and then the, the, the Treasury comes along and neutralizes the impact by selling off uh, government bonds and then putting the proceeds away in a special account at the Reserve Bank. Now. Uh, I would argue that actually we perhaps should be buying dollars now more actively and also not, not neutralizing it in the way, way we, we, we like to do because, mm -hmm. in fact, the, uh, the system, our system uh, needs more cash. I think we, that would be a form of quantitative easing. Mm. Well, so but my, my argument is really not with, with the RAND, it's, w it's with the Reserve Bank and its policy settings. Uh, uh, I think South Africa needs, uh, urgently needs, aggressively lower short-term interest rates and quantitative easing. And that might well, as we've seen lately, weaken the RAND because we've seen the RAND strengthen in response to the Reserve Bank's uh, decision not to cut interest rates uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm. which was, I think, the wrong, wrong quite mm. the wrong decision. Brian, so it's, Brian it's just monetary picking... policy that's really too tight. Uh, uh, pick, and the exchange up... rate, well reflect some of that. Brian, just picking up on that point where you're talking about quantitative easing, I mean, it's obviously a very contentious yeah. issue when it comes uh, to what the U.S. has been doing. And of course, we know that it could actually be quite detrimental going forward. Uh, do you really think that that is, uh, is a possibility here in South Africa? Would that not really scare foreign investors away? Or is that, going to, is that no, the point? Well, I, th I, th I think the, the, the problem at the moment, as you, as you recognize, the RAND's probably too strong for any useful purpose. It's the most useful purpose of a strong rand is to is to hold down inflation. I mean, the the key to inflation in South Africa is is the rand. So it's not as if we we'd frighten them away. I think we'd we'd perhaps attract them less than we're doing now 
because our interest rates are so high, there, it's clearly a, there's a carry trade in the RAND at the moment that's uh, responsible for, for the, uh, the recent, the very recent strength of the RAND e even today. So no, we, we should be setting our, our interest rate policies and our money s supply policies with proper regard to the state of the South African economy and, 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 and then leave the RAND to, to look after itself. Uh, well, Chris Malconi. So, 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 yeah. Chris Malacani is not joining us in the studio at the moment. We are joined on the line, though, by Patrick Craven. He's a spokesperson for Cosato. Uh, Patrick, a very good afternoon. I'm sure that uh, Brian Cantor's words must be music to your ears. It's stuff that Cosato has been saying. You would like to see a weaker round. You would like to see lower interest rates. Uh, give us your view. What do you think the government should be doing at this stage or the Reserve Bank on the round? Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I didn't hear a word that he said. But uh, I'm glad that you think he is supporting our view. We think the problem is that uh, the South African currency, being at the level it has been over the recent period, has uh, made it much more difficult for South African firms to export and um, has therefore led to fewer jobs or mm. much higher levels of unemployment than we might otherwise have seen. And we think that given that jobs is the absolute top priority or the economy at the moment, any policy which will help to um, bring down the levels of unemployment should be supported. And if a weaker RAND will do that, then we certainly think that uh, even if there are some other negative consequences overall, that will be in the best interests of um, particularly South African workers, but also I think the, the economy as a whole. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian, the Reserve Bank's mandate is to target inflation and, you know, some have said that the Reserve Bank missed an opportunity to cut interest rates at the most recent MPC and I hear that you're basically echoing the same uh, tune. Tell us what your views are going forward when it comes to the Reserve Bank because we know in the US they've got a try mandate, they're looking at growth, they're looking at inflation and of course they also look at their local currency. Do you think that South Africa should be adopting similar strategies? Yes, yes. I, I've never liked the inflation targets because of the volatility and unpredictability of the exchange rate. So, so unless you can get reasonably predictable responses uh, to monetary policy in the exchange rate, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to uh, target an inflation rate that you, that, that you cannot, in fact, hope to control. Uh, and, and that's in the new mandate for the Reserve Bank. They, they were told not to worry about inflation or inflation expectations that were beyond their control, inflationary forces beyond their control. And I think uh, over the years we've seen the Reserve Bank uh, target inflation regardless of the, of the causes of that inflation, and in particular exchange rate shocks to, to inflation. So I think we've, we've, we've suffered unnecessarily for the sake of these inflation targets and an inflation that is actually not under the control of, of monetary policy as now. I mean, the Reserve Bank said in its last statement that they, they're looking to an economy operating well below its potential for an extended period of time. Well. If that's the case, uh, and, and certainly the, the, the fact that the economy is operating well below its potential says that there's no demand pressure on inflation, uh, which the Reserve Bank could, could uh, influence and does influence, it's all on the, the supply side. So I think, I think we've got things badly wrong. I, uh, my own view is we, uh, we got ourselves into the recession with aggressive monetary policy, much too aggressive, that was kept on uh, you know, kept up too long. We then ran into the international financial crisis, and uh, we've done almost, uh, we've done not nearly enough to, to, to get out of that. Uh, we, we should have been doing much more to encourage domestic, d domestic spending, and we should be doing much more now. And the fact that we're not doing enough, uh, in part, has showed, uh, showed up in, in the, strength of the, the strength of the RAND. So, um, there are other problems with the South African economy. You know, I agree with Casato on the interest rate, but I mean, if you if you really want to know the source of our problems uh, of economic growth, more fundamentally, it's not the exchange rate; it's the inflexibility of the labour market. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
A further problem has been that the, the, the labor movement has been seeking and achieving wage increases way ahead of inflation, despite the weakness in the domestic economy. Well, Patrick, uh, of course, you uh, were in the studio yesterday the chatting just about the... impact of that has been the... unemployment. I mean, the unemployment we see is, at least to a significant degree, the, the result of the inflexibility of the labor market and the apparent tolerance of unemployment by, by Kasatu. And that worries the Reserve Bank. I don't think that that's reason for keeping up interest rates. I don't think the uh, wages lead to inflation, uh, wage, excessive wages, but they certainly lead to unemployment. Well, Patrick, of course, you were in the studio yesterday just checking about some of the strike activity we're seeing at the moment. How do you respond to what, what Brian has to say just about the inflexibility of our labor force and the impact that it has on, on the economy? Well, as you would expect, I totally disagree. I think we have an extremely flexible labor market. In fact, it's too flexible in many ways. Uh, we've seen a huge growth of the casualization of labor, which is the most flexible form of labor you could possibly want. And um, it's having its effect on the formal sector as well, because uh, with unemployment so high and so many uh, workers desperate to work, it actually makes it extremely easy too easy in our view for employers to hire and fire workers uh, and to treat them uh, way below the, um, the minimum levels which our labor laws dictate. Uh, and those labor laws themselves are um, comparable with uh, most other countries in the world. In fact, they were modeled on labor laws in other countries. So uh, with the greatest of respect, I think it's a great myth which uh, economists keep trotting out without thinking about it, about the inflexible labor laws. I think if they actually went down to the ground and actually looked at what's happening, the workers who are standing on street corners prepared to work for almost nothing, uh, it, would, uh, it, it would show him how completely erroneous this idea is. Well, Having said that, I was interested to see that I do agree with him on inflation targeting. I hope that this will, uh, the message will get through.